Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I hope you are all doing well, that you're all staying safe and healthy. Remember that Shalom is here for you. If you have any prayer requests or if you have any needs, give us a call or send us an email. I will be checking the church email this week as Amber is out at, is, uh, well, she's on vacation. So uh, just uh, send me a, send an email or give the office a call. We'll get back to you. Also remember Ruth's word of the day. And uh, another announcement I want to make real quick is that Shalom has put together a team to talk about how and when to safely reopen. We expect this process to take a little while. Uh, as you can see from the news, the cases are, are still, there are still new cases every day. And while it looks like the, we, the, we've gone over a peak for hospitalizations, so much is still very uncertain about what lies ahead. So your council and your staff will keep you posted as to what we are hoping when we are hoping to reopen and what that will look like. I will tell you that it will come in stages, that we will be doing certain things that carry lower risk, such as a drive-in communion. That's something that we're looking at implementing either by the end of this month or early next month. Today we commemorate Columba, abbot of Iona, who died in 597, and Aidan, Bishop of Lindisfarne, who died in 651. So there's Lindisfarne Castle on the island of Lindisfarne, or as, the, as they call it there, Holy Island. Iona is on the other coast of Scotland, and it is a it it has been a center of Gallic monasticism for a very long time. Two mission. This is from Fadiker's book. Two missionaries to Britain who kept alive the light of learning and devotion during the Dark Ages may be commemorated together today. Columba, his name is said to have been originally Cremthen. In Irish, he is called. <laughs> You know, I don't know how to pronounce Gaelic, so Col Colum Sila, dove of the church, was born at Garton Donegal of the Ro Royal Neil dynasty about 521. He was educated in Irish monasteries by some of the leading teachers of his time and ordained deacon at the monastery of, of Moville. He studied at Clonard and was ordained priest, priest at, in 551 at Glasnevin near Dublin. He established several churches and monasteries in Ireland. About 563, at the age of 42, as a pilgrim for Christ, he left Ireland with 12 companions and established a community on the island of Hye, later called Iona, on the west coast, off the west coast of Scotland, where, legend has it, his tiny boat had washed ashore. This monastery served as a center for missions to the Irish who had settled in Scotland, and also to the Picts, the original inhabitants of Scotland, and the Northumbrians. Columba lived at Iona more than 30 years, Bede says 32, evangelizing the mainland and establishing monasteries in the islands nearby. He often returned to Ireland for synods. In those days, a synod wasn't an organizational body, but it was a group that came, it was often a group of church leaders that came together to it was a synod assembly think of our synod assembly a synod back then is more like what we would think of as a synod assembly now it would be a getting together a deliberation he established iona as a link between irish and pictish christians now this is a charming legend there is a legend in 565 that he rebuked the Loch Ness monster with the sign of the cross and commanded it to seize its vicious ways after it had killed one man and was about to attack another. The miracle is said to have caused the conversion of Bruda, king of the Picts. It's a good story. A powerful personality, a great open-air preacher, an able organizer, and a poet, Columba has been described as a kind of 6th century John Wesley. 
Bede calls him a true monk in life no less than in habit, who turned the picks to the faith of Christ by his words and example, and so received the island of Iona from them to establish a monastery there. Columba died on Sunday, June 5th, 597, according to Bede, age 77. There's quite a bit more here, but we have to get to Aidan. Aidan, a monk of Iona, was like Columba, born in Ireland. He was trained at the monastery of Iona and was invited by Oswald, the Christian king of Northumbria, who himself had lived at Iona and where he was converted and baptized to revive missionary work in his kingdom and to reconvert the lapsed Northumbrians. The first monk who had been sent returned to report that the people were unwilling to hear his message. Aidan replied that perhaps a gentler approach would have been more successful. Aidan was therefore chosen to go. He was consecrated bishop in 635 and established his headquarters on the island of Lindisfarne, off the northeast coast of England, in imitation of his home monastery at Iona. So, so you, have, you have Lindisfarne here is off the east coast of the British Isles, and Iona is off the west coast. From there, from Lindisfarne, he made long journeys to the mainland as far south as London, strengthening Christian communities and founding new missionary outposts and teaching the practice of the Celtic Church. The Irish Church from the beginning was organized on a different basis from the Church of Rome. It had a primitive and tribal organization, suited to a rural and rather rude society, it was monastic rather than episcopal in administration, and what that means is it was administered by monks. So the monks would be uh, charged with the administration of and, and the rule, for lack of a better word, of the church there rather than bishops. And emphasized right living rather than elaborate theology. The Irish monasteries were Christian colonies in a pagan land. Holy experiments for the practice of Christian living and virtue. Aidan organized a monastery on Lindisfarne where English boys were educated and trained to be missionaries among the English. No wealth was allowed to accumulate. Surpluses were applied to the relief of the poor and the manumission of slaves. When Aidan preached, King Oswald himself served as his interpreter since Aidan was not fluent in English. The death of King Oswald, his friend and patron, was a great loss but Oswald's successor, Oswin, was no de less dear to him. Aidan adhered to the Celtic method of dating Easter, which depended on an 84-year cycle rather than the Roman 19-year cycle. I have to just add that calculating the date of Easter has been an ongoing thorn in the side of the church since the church was begun. Now, when do we celebrate Easter? Aidan was admired for both his asceticism and his gentleness. He died August 31st, 651. The cause of his death is said to have been grief at the murder of King Oswin, who had been a companion in his missionary travels. Aidan was buried on Lindisfarne. Psalm is Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring down, spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. A reading from today, for today is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 9.
If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I, make the, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jew I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the problem. There we go. With having a window open, you get in the way. So our reading today is from The Life of Columba by Adam Nan, Abbot of Iona. The saint entered the church for the Vesper office of the Lord's night. As soon as that was finished, he returned to his lodging and reclined on his sleeping place, where during the night he used to have for a bed the bare rock, and for pillow a stone, which even today stands beside his grave as a kind of epitaph. So while reclining there, he gave his last commands to the brothers in the hearing of his attendant alone, and said, I commend to you, my children, these latest words, that you shall have among yourselves mutual and unfeigned charity with peace. If you follow this course after the examples of the Holy Fathers, God, who gives strength to the good, will help you, and I, abiding with them, shall intercede for you. And not only will the necessities of this life be sufficiently provided by him, but also the rewards of eternal good things will be bestowed that are prepared for those who follow the divine commandments. We have carried down to this point, briefly told the last words of the venerable patron when he was, as it were, crossing over to the heavenly country from this weary pilgrimage. After them, the saint was silent for a while, as the happy latest hour drew near. Then, when the beaten bell resounded at midnight, he rose in haste and went to the church, and running entered in advance of the others, alone, and bowing his knees in prayer, he sank down beside the altar. In that moment, Diormit, the attendant following later, saw from the distance the whole mute church filled inside with angelic light around the, about the saint. As Diormit approached the doorway, that light he had seen quickly faded. A few more of the brothers also had seen it, when they too were a little way off. So Diormit, entering the church, cried with a tearful voice, Where are you? Where are you, Father? And groping in the darkness, since the lamps of the brothers had not yet been brought, he found the saint lying before the altar. Raising him a little, and sitting down beside him, he placed the holy head upon his lap. Meanwhile, the company of monks ran up with lights, and when they saw that their father was dying, they began to lament. And as we have learned from some men who were present there, the saint, whose soul had not yet departed, opened his eyes and looked around on either side with wonderful joy and gladness of countenance, he was, for he was gazing upon the holy angels that had come to meet him. The Diormit raised the holy right hand to bless the saint's company of monks. And the venerable father himself at the, the same time moved his hand, 
as much as he was able, in order that he might be seen to bless the brothers even by the movement of his hand, a thing that in the departure of his soul he could not do by voice. And after the holy benediction thus expressed, he presently breathed out his spirit. When that had left the tabernacle of the body, his face continued to be ruddy, and in a wonderful degree gladdened by the vision of angels, so much that it seemed like the face not of a dead man, but of a living sleeper. Meanwhile, the whole church resounded with sorrowful lamentations. Thanks again to Ruth Blum for providing the accompaniment for our hymn today. The tune to the King of Love, My Shepherd is, is St. Columba, a traditional Irish tune. And so I thought that appropriate for today's hymn. The King of Love, My Shepherd pray for the church, for the world, and for all of those in need. Lord Christ, we pray for your church in this time of turmoil, of transition, of upheaval, that it may be the witness to you, our only hope. We pray for our, our world, this fragile island home that we all have. Inspire us direct us to be good stewards of all these gifts you have given us. Help us to treat your creation with more care and respect. We pray for the world, for all peoples, for all nations of the world, 
four different ethnic groups in America, for African American, for Latino, Latina, and Latinx peoples, for European descent peoples, for all peoples. Help us to embrace your vision of justice for all, of true, genuine justice, and not a convenient fiction of our own imagination. Stir, steer us away from more platitudes and direct us toward action that will benefit people. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for those who suffer from COVID-19, and for those who care for them, for those who are suffering economically, for those whose small businesses have closed or are in danger, for those who put their lives on the line every day for our benefit. We lift up to you Ray, Evie, Ray, Tom, Jim, Connie, Skip, Jody, Norm, Jenny, Phyllis, Kiera, Arlene, Lisa, Jerry, Sandra, Maury, David, Vi, the Silver, Kingsburg, Pletcher, and Toivonen families, and those we name before you now silently or aloud. Grant them the shalom that only you can give. Finally, Lord, bring us with all your saints, especially Columba and Aden, to the feast that has no end, when your heavenly kingdom and the new creation become a reality. In Jesus' name. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Be safe, be well, and I will see you back here again on Thursday. God be with you.